People tell me I look like a white Chris Rock. You think that's true? <laughs> look at that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like the illegitimate son of Jerry and Elaine. That's the other option. <laughs> what? Look at that. Huh? You laugh, I have to live like this. <laughs> Actually, this guy came up to me after a show once. He goes, Ryan, I gotta tell you, this is gonna sound a little strange, but you look exactly like my daughter. <laughs> You're not great with compliments, really. <laughs> he tried to set me up with her. Can you believe that? <laughs> yeah, that's what I want, to marry my clone, right? Oh, the pitter-patter of a bunch of little asexual us's just running around the house. Slow down, Jane. I'm Timmy, Daddy. <laughs> Get a haircut. You look like Mommy. <laughs> I saw a guy on a bicycle built for two alone. That'll bum you out. <laughs> he was on the back. To me, that just screams low self-esteem, you know? <laughs> I just wanted to shout, learn some leadership skills. <laughs> I saw this guy on the train who was wearing cat-eye contact lenses. That was his look. That's what he did. He just got out and said, I'm looking like a cat. It was weird. <laughs> just sitting there on the train, just meow, looking around. <laughs> Here's the thing about that look, it's not an accident. Sometimes I look off. I might put on the wrong pants and shirt combination, but I don't catch myself in the mirror halfway through the day and go, oh, I look like a man cat again today. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no practical purpose behind this look. The only thing I can come up with, maybe if you're crossing the street in the dark, it might come in handy then, right? <laughs> if, if you see like a six foot man kitty in your high beams. <laughs> You're gonna slow down, that's a human being. <laughs> I think, I think he wanted attention maybe. So what it is, I got down, I looked him right in the cat eyes, right? <laughs> Just mano y gato. I got down, I looked him right in the eyes. <laughs> and I just went. <laughs> <laughs> Here kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't laugh at all. I think he was depressed, maybe. Uh, so I pulled out my laser pointer, and he had a lot of fun with that, you know what I mean? He was like all over the place, running into things. I was waiting at an elevator. There was this guy on his phone, and he's just looking at me, and it's awkward, it's weird. And he takes a step towards me, and he doesn't even hang up the phone, and he says, like he's in a hurry, he says, hey, do you, do you know for certain if you've been saved by the Lord Jesus Christ? And I was like, why, did he say something? <laughs> Is that him? Are you talking to him? Let me talk to him, let me talk to him. I think I know what this is about. Let me talk to him. I mean, religious or not, nobody wants rumors floating around, you know? <laughs> I'm trying to be more romantic in my life. I went on a hot air balloon ride with a girl. Uh, yeah. Turns out there are a lot of obstacles involved between uh, actually coming up with that idea and turning it into a romantic experience. You have to get up at 5 a.m., did you know that? Hot air balloons, they don't work during the day. I was done at 7 a.m. Where do you go from there in terms of a romantic situation? I don't know what to do with your 7 a.m. You wanna hit Denny, sweetie? Is that what we should do? I don't know what to do. It looks nice when you look at it from the ground. You look up in the sky, go, oh, that's peaceful, serene. It looks great. You got up, I got up there, I realized, this is panic inducing, is what it is. Uh, it's hard for me to be a man in this situation. I'm trapped in the sky in a tiny wicker basket. It's made of wicker. I don't, I don't trust wicker. They don't make planes of wicker, as far as I know. I don't trust wicker when it's on the ground, you know? Have you ever sat on anything wicker, ever? 
The whole time I'm like, oh, this is breaking right now. I can hear it breaking. Why is your furniture made of weeds? It's, it's a tiny wicker basket in the sky, by the way, attached to a flamethrower. Is that a good idea? Why is that a good idea? It's a death trap in the sky. And it's small, it's too tiny. If this basket were in, uh, in my kitchen, I'd put fruit in it, but it's in the sky. It's small, you need, you need to be alone to be in a romantic situation. We're up there with another man. He's in the basket with us. It's too close. I can hear him breathing. I don't care for it. He's our pilot. And just let me say, pilot is a term used loosely in the hot air ballooning community. He should know where we're going, don't you think? At the very least, I said, hey, where are we going? He said, I've got up or down, what do you want? That's what he told me. <laughs> wow. I'll take down, I'm terrified of your death trap in the sky. I went on a horse-drawn carriage ride with a girl. That's supposed to be romantic. Here's my question, why is it romantic to go back in time? Like 100 years from now, we're gonna be like, hey, sweetie, you wanna take a Ford Focus around the park? Should we do that? <laughs> That's exactly what we've done, you know? Just one guy up front, where are we going, lovebirds? <laughs> Two in the back, you know, this is an adorable Ford Focus. It runs on gasoline. <laughs> I always feel sorry for those horses. And I'm walking down the street with a friend of mine who's out of work, and I said, oh, I feel sorry for the horse. Do you know what he came back with? Oh, I bet he's happy to just have a job. <laughs> is, that, is that the point that we've come to in our country, that we're jealous of the animals who are working? Like, he's got this attitude, like, these horses are coming over here and stealing all our jobs. Doesn't make any sense. But I realized I don't have anything. You can't take that from me, you know? That's what I realized. The only thing I own is debt. That's it. It's gonna take a lot for this to trickle down and affect me, you know? When all those financial institutions were collapsing, I actually had this thought. Does that include the credit card companies? <laughs> Did you think that? <laughs> I, I thought, I might come out on top of this situation. <laughs> Let's roll the dice on this one. See, my life didn't really change. I used to shop at the dollar store. Guess where I still shop? Yeah, I can't really go down from the dollar store. There's no free store that I ever found. But I like the dollar store, I'm fine with it. It's a, it's a place of ultimate freedom. Do you have that in your life? Yeah. Do you know what I think when I walk through the doors of the dollar store? Here's what goes through my head. Oh, I can have any of this stuff. This is great. <laughs> this is all within reach. This is my kingdom. I get a little kick in my step. It feels good to me, you know? It's not bad. Did you ever see the abandoned cart at the dollar store? Oh, that's a sad mystery, isn't it? It's like five $1 items just sprinkled around the bottom of the cart. I mean, some poor sorry soul had to be like, I'm out, I can't do it anymore. I can't afford these five $1 items. I feel sorry for that guy, so I kick his through the line. I'll take his and mine. I'll take both of these. And I pay cash, everybody. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to pay a little cash. I just throw it at him. There you go, I make it rain at the dollar store. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah. That's the kind of gangster life I lead. I make it rain at the dollar store. I was at one dollar store. They were having a clearance sale at the dollar store. That's some crap stuff right there. Uh, that's almost garbage, really. Uh, that's as close as you can get to being garbage without actually becoming garbage. The only thing standing between that item and garbage is your purchase. That's all it is. Just put it on the street on your way out. It's trash. If you're shopping clearance at the dollar store, your life isn't where you want it to be. Let's say that. You gotta step it up and buy quality at a certain point. I bought a 52-piece tool set at the dollar store. I, 
I don't even know how that's possible. It's less than two cents per tool. How do you do that? You could just call it a mistake if you wanted to. It had a spatula in it. That's what was in my tool set. There was a spatula and 51 nails in my 52-piece tool set. I was just at home like, this doesn't even work. It doesn't work at all. But I learned to adapt. I keep everything on one belt now. It's all right there. I got hammer, ladle, right? Spatula, staple gun, OK? You want a pancake? Well, how about if I put it on the wall? How about that? I can put your pancake on the wall. I do a lot of traveling. I was on a flight that was like an hour delayed, and the pilot came over and said, ladies and gentlemen, don't worry about the delay. We're going to make up some time. And that got me nervous. And then he added, I know a shortcut. <laughs> I hope so. We're flying. It's the ultimate shortcut. We're going over everything. You know you can go through the clouds, right? You don't have to go around the clouds. If you know a shortcut and you're flying, that's just called the plan, and you do it every time. I'll leave you with this. I was staying at a, a hotel. It was a real dump. Had no amenities. I called to get a wake-up call. The voice on the other end actually said, you make $16,000 a year and you haven't had a decent date in months. I'm just going to go ahead and set the alarm, if that's OK with you. Is, is that going to be OK with you, Mom, if I just go ahead and? Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much.